Hi, it's Dan from EUJuicers.com, and today I'm going to show you some of the non-juicing functions, some of the non-juicing things you can do with the Sauna by Omega EUJ707. Of course, we know it makes great juice. It will do leafy greens, root vegetables, just about everything, but it also has other functions. It's a truly multifunctional device, and I'm going to show you things like baby food, nut butters, pastas. There's a lot of things you can do with this machine, so I hope you'll enjoy this video. Now the secret to be, being able to make other things than juice is this item right here. This is called a blank screen or a homogenizing screen. Let me show you how it's different from the screen that comes with the 707 for juicing. It actually comes with three screens. We have a fine screen, a coarse screen. These are for juices. Your coarse screen is um, fibrous things like celery, pineapple, things like that. The fine screen is for most everything else, carrots, other fruits. But the blank screen actually has no screen for the juice to be extracted. What that means is everything is going to be pressed into here and then come out all together. So I'm going to put that in here and attach the cap there. And the first thing we're going to make is baby food. Now when you have babies transitioning from liquid food to solid food, you typically would go to the supermarket and you can buy all kinds of baby foods in a jar basically just different foods blended together. When I had my daughters uh, transitioning at this stage, we tried it in a blender and it was a mess. It did not work because I didn't want to buy some of those things in the supermarket. You're never sure what's in there. If you do it yourself at home, you can be absolutely sure of the quality, that it's fresh. You make just enough for that day. And you can combine ingredients depending on what your baby likes. You could put in peas, uh, celery, beans, different meats, potatoes, carrots, all kinds of vegetables. What we're going to do today, I have here some potatoes, carrots, I have some celery root, and chicken meat. Now these were all boiled. That will make it easier to process. Obviously you want them cooked. You could also use turkey meat. That might be better if you're worried about additives in the chicken or make sure you buy bio chicken meat. So I'll start simply. What I'll do is alternate some of these ingredients. It will go through the 707. It will be kind of crushed together. It's not chopped. It's not high speed. It's a slow speed process. And you'll see the results here. So that was very quick. It took about a minute to process these through. I'll show you the results. What I'd like to do here is just kind of stir it all around, mix it together. Make sure you get everything all nicely mixed up. It's kind of got a consistency similar to mashed potatoes almost. Perfect consistency, small pieces, nothing that's going to harm the baby, and it's all fresh, ready to go. And that's what it looks like. Now we have another possibility. If your baby's younger or if you want a finer consistency, the EUJ707 also comes with a set of nozzles. We'll see some more of these when we make our pasta. But you can attach the nozzle before you put on the cap here, and that will compress it. That will give you a finer consistency and just a smoother overall blend. So that's a, a second possibility to keep in mind. One of the most popular sandwiches in America is peanut butter and jelly. Now, I'm from California, and I grew up on this. My kids grew up on it as well. And some studies were done not too long ago saying that peanut butter and jelly is actually one of the healthiest sandwiches out there, especially compared to processed meats. And it all depends on the quality of the peanut butter. And of course, if you use jelly that doesn't have added sugar, things like that. But because of the protein found in peanut butter, the problem is it's hard to find a good peanut butter because a lot of them have uh, hydrogenated oils added to it, preservatives, some most actually have sugar added to them. 
So we started making our own peanut butter several years ago using a blender. It was kind of a rough process, a little difficult. And now we make it with the 707. I use this at home, actually, a 707. And one of the main reasons I chose it was because of the functionality to be able to make things like peanut butter and salsas and things like that. So I'm going to show you here how I make peanut butter at home. Start with uh, just roasted peanuts. I use salted. You can use non-salted, or you can use non-salted, add a little salt later. And what I do, I buy peanut oil. And you can get that in most stores. And I just add some peanut oil to the peanuts, and I mix it together. An alternative process would be to run the peanuts directly through, because they have a decent enough oil content inside of them. This just makes it a lot easier. If you don't use the oil, you can run it through. And then you take what you've got and run it through a second or third time, because the first run will be kind of dry and powdery. This lets you uh, skip that step just a bit. You'll also notice I put a little bowl under the outlet part of the juicer here, because sometimes some of the oil will drip through a bit. And I keep that there just to get any mess out of the way. So I've mixed some oil, and I vary it just to depending on the results I see. Sometimes I'll run it through twice. You'll notice I put the small nozzle here just to get a more compressed consistency. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up, feed the peanuts in, and you'll see the peanut butter coming out. I make this often at home. My kids love it. I've also used cashews. I'll make cashew butter. And you'll see here, it's coming out in these tubes. What you can do, you can run this through the machine again if you want. Sometimes I'll add a little oil directly to what I have here, or I'll just mix it up. It just depends how much peanut oil I use. But the nice thing about this is you know the ingredients. It's just peanuts. All that's in peanut oil is peanuts, and a little salt if you got salted peanuts to start with. So you end up with this. And then what I'll usually do is kind of mash it together a bit. If I want a smoother consistency, I might add a little more oil. But this actually came out at a real good consistency. And this stuff is delicious, spread on bread with a little jelly. Some people like to do it with a little honey. It's fast. It's easy. It tastes 100 times better than what you'll get in the store. So that's quick and easy homemade peanut butter. Something new you can make with the EUJ707, as well as our uh, sister model, the EUJ606, is press your own oil at home, and that's using the new sauna oil extractor. We have another video that details exactly how this device works, how you attach it, how you clean it, and we show many different seeds being pressed. But uh, we're going to show you today flaxseed, and the advantage of pressing your own oil at home First of all, it's very high in nutrition. We detail this in the other video, but there's antibacterial properties, anti-inflammatory properties, even anti-cancer properties. You can go to the health store. You can buy your own oil. The problem is it's very expensive. You get a very small quantity. And once you open it, it oxidizes very rapidly. So this is a practical way to make it at home, just the quantity you want. And you can be sure that it's fresh. So I'm going to start up the machine here, and it's a simple process. I'll just feed the flax seeds into the hopper here, and we'll see the oil coming out. So as you can see, the machine's pushing out these husks. This is just basically the shells of the seeds. The oil is coming out here. And after a couple of minutes here, we have a nice quantity of oil, because you're not going to use this for cooking, obviously. This is for health purposes. You'll take a teaspoon a day just as a nutritional supplement. So again, another possibility of the EUJ707, make your own oil at home. Another great feature of the EUJ 707 is the ability to make your own pasta at home. And it comes with these three nozzles here. We have a round, bigger nozzle, like a spaghetti-sized nozzle. 
we have a flat nozzle for flat egg noodles, and then we have a fine uh, with little circle nozzle like for vermicelli, real fine angel hair pasta, things like that. Now what we've done here is make a real simple recipe. This is just 200 grams of flour and two eggs. You could also add a little salt to it if you'd like. You could do that after you cook it. And I've divided it into three portions. So first thing I'll do is put in the nozzle here. I'm going to do the spaghetti nozzle first. You just drop it in, slide it on here, and I'm going to roll it out into more of a tube shape just to feed it a bit easier. We'll turn it on and start feeding it. As you can see, this goes very quickly. I'm rotating the dish here just to get a nice little pile of spaghetti here. And when it's just about finished, I'll go ahead and chop it off with a knife and we'll swap out our nozzles. It's still coming out a little bit. Oh, that's probably enough. Just cut it off right there. You can see you've got a nice mound of spaghetti ready to eat. Well, ready to cook, actually. I don't think you want to eat it raw. Next, I'll go ahead and get the flat pasta nozzle ready. See there's a little piece of flour in there, or dough in there actually. Let's get our second piece. This is gonna be flat egg noodles. And you can see you don't even need the pusher, this just self-feeds. Let me turn the plate, and here we go. It's really fast, as you can see, and so simple. Just flour and eggs, and a bit of salt if you'd like. Looks like that's a good time to chop it off here. And now we have our flat noodles, as well as the spaghetti, ready to cook. The last pasta I'm gonna make is the fine pasta, kind of your angel hair vermicelli type of pasta. Go ahead and put the nozzle in. Make sure to seal it completely because this will generate a lot of pressure from these tiny little holes. So it's just about finished here. As you can see, three really different types of pastas, flat egg noodles, thicker spaghetti, fine, egg, uh, fine angel hair pasta. You wanna make sure with the fine pasta that you use a lighter dough, like I said. We put a little oil in there, a little hot water that will loosen it up, make it softer, because there's a tremendous amount of pressure being generated there. It'll just make it come out a lot easier. So again, pasta, just another nice function of the EUJ707. The EUJ707 can also make almond milk. This is a little longer process than some of the, these others. It involves a few steps. First step, you take your almonds and you need to soak them in water to get them soft enough that it can really grind them up properly. So we recommend soaking at least eight hours minimum. Next step, I'm gonna feed these soaked almonds into the juicer. We'll get a little juice coming out, but mostly we'll just get pulp and that will go into this bowl here. Into that pulp, I'll mix a glass of water, stir it well, feed that through, and that will give us our almond milk. So let me start with the first step. Go ahead and turn on the juicer and start feeding the almonds into it. Now 
Now I'm not using the homogenizing screen anymore. I'm using the regular fine juicing screen. It's an important point to remember, which is how it's separating out the milk from the almonds. And these process through quite quickly. So they're all processed in there. Now I'm going to add the water to it. Let me just get it spread out a bit. It's going to absorb this water, and that's going to help the milk to be extracted from it in the next phase. In fact, there's a real creamy consistency now with the water in there, almost like oatmeal a bit. So I've mixed the water real thoroughly. You see I have a nice milky consistency now in my bowl here. This will now be fed through the 707. So I'll get another pulp container to catch this stuff. And you see the almond milk coming out the bottom there. So most of it's gone through now. And you see it's extracted quite a bit of almond milk there. Go ahead and shut this down. Put a paper towel to catch any extra that drips out. And you can see here, full glass of almond milk. One nice advantage to the EUJ707 is that it can actually double as a coffee grinder. Now, it's not going to grind the fine grain coffee like you would from a professional or a commercial coffee machine. But if you have a EUJ707, you don't have a coffee grinder, it's a good way to grind your own. The important thing to remember is you need to feed it into the machine very slowly. You're going to use the blank screen, just like we do for any homogenizing functions. So I'll turn it on. Just feed it in about a spoon at a time. And once the coffee comes out, feed in the next spoon and so on. It's very fast, just takes a minute or so. <clears throat> Use just regular coffee beans that you'd buy in the shop, and you end up with nice ground coffee ready to go. So the first thing I did with the 707 today was the baby food made from carrots, uh, chicken, some other things. Call this uh, baby snack. This is fruit when the baby's transitioning to solid food. You can do the exact same thing that we did before, only with something sweet and healthy too. What I have here are apples, strawberries, bananas, kiwis, and pears. I've got the blank screen in there, and just like before, I'll feed them in piece by piece. I'll alternate them. It'll make it easier to mix together afterwards. So again, this is fast, it's easy, it's very healthy for your baby. Just a simple thing you can do, and it saves on buying the stuff at the supermarket, and you can be guaranteed of the quality of the ingredients. That's homemade, easy to do, 
snack for your baby. And the final thing that I will show you how to make with the 707 is a homemade sorbet. This is real simple. You just go to the store, get some frozen fruit. Here I've got some frozen blueberries, some strawberries. This last one's a mix. I see some uh, raspberries, blackberries, cranberries, and some smaller blueberries. Simple enough, you'll again slowly put them into the 707, give it time to do its thing. I'm gonna use the small nozzle here, the circular nozzle, and it's simple enough, let me demonstrate. You want to make sure they're nice and frozen. If you let them thaw, you'll get more of a melted mush. One thing to remember is not to feed the fruit too quickly, again, especially these big, solid, frozen strawberries, you can overload the machine if you try to force them through. Just let it take its time, and you'll see the result here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of mash it together, but it's at a consistency of sorbet. And let me just scoop some out here. It's a great treat on a hot day. It's just pure fruit, but nice and cold and refreshing. And that's homemade sorbet in just a few minutes. So as you can see, the EUJ707 is more than just a juicer. There's a lot of things you can make with it besides juice. Some of the things we made today, we had baby food, peanut butter, flaxseed oil, few different kinds of pasta, almond milk, coffee, ground fruit as a baby snack, and sorbet. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact us. Our contact information is at eujuicers.com. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.